I haven't been playing much this week, uh, aside from Elden Ring. But you <laughs> finished off. Uh, <laughs> you you, you never finished off about Saints Row, <laughs> which I kind of just gave up on. I was done with that game after last weekend. Um, why, why are you giving up so, on Saints Row? <laughs> well, yeah. I listen. I played more after we recorded the podcast last week, and like after a couple of hours, I'm like, why am I playing this? I'm not enjoying myself. I could play something else, and then that was it. That I was just done. And but you ended up finishing it. Yeah. So I I did finish it, much to my surprise, because open world game you expect open world games to be. I don't know. I just expect expect there to be hours upon hours of you know story content. Because I'm thinking of other open world games I've played, like I mean. Not quite in the same vein, but in recent examples, let's say like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is this big open world Norse game. Um, Grand Theft Auto itself back in the day is a relatively long experience with three protagonists. Mm. So color me very, very confused when the story of the Sancho reboot progresses so fast that it rolls credits after like, I'm going to say 10 to 12 hours, if that's. Um, but to be clear, like I didn't do a lot of the sad stuff, but still, it felt like the story was very short. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, after having finished the game, I can confirm that Sancho is a very bad game, objectively. <laughs> like it's the open world is very bare, not nice to look at. Uh, it's so big. Yeah, the number of times I had to reboot my game or load in and out because the camera was locked or I'd clip through something. Yeah, like, I've like, heard of some wild so, as fuck like yeah, bugs so in this game. many, so many bugs. Um, I acknowledge all of that. The story not that great. Like I like the characters, but the story itself breakneck pace <laughs> to those so, credits. So let me say just before you carry on, the story has an interesting premise from the beginning. Yes, like so. If you don't know, the game starts with you. You're you're a player creator character, obviously, mm. but you live in an apartment with three other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I didn't realize at first, but quickly becomes apparent, is everyone is associated with a different with gang. With a gang, yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, what's the girl's name? Nila? I think uh, it Nina. Is, or... Nina. Yeah. Nina's with the... Uh, Los God, Panteros? No, Los Santeros. Yeah. The the other guy who never wears a shirt is with the idols. <laughs> the um, millennials, yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you are with, you like, with, the paramilitary company. Yeah, you with the corporation. Then Eli's yeah. just not with anyone. He's just Yeah, Eli's uh, just yeah. a smart dude who doesn't want to get involved. Yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool because you kind of have, like, this, this uh, uh, roommate code where you each, like, warn each other of impending attacks on mm. each other's, like, ground. Although it always seems skewed to favor you as the player character, like everyone mm. else seemed to be getting screwed by this agreement more than yeah. anything else. But I thought that was like a really cool premise. And then like two hours in, obviously that devolves into you creating your own your gang. Your own gang. So yeah, but that, does that never really like come up again? Or No, so the setup is like, I, I really thought the setup was quite cool. It's like, oh, this mm. is a, a soft reboot of Saints Row and this is actually how... You know, it's a take on the gang, the saints. They they all were part of gangs, thought, we're tired of this, we're going to do our own thing. You know, we're going to be our mm. own bosses. And that's a really cool setup. And the game essentially is you launching your gang and almost like, I suppose, like any <laughs> IRL gang running it like a business. Like, where are you going to get money to pay all the people who are part of your gang? What are you doing with all that money? What are you doing with all your power? Um, It just, mm. it goes through, it's such a breakneck pace where... Quite literally, so you know there's the three major gangs. It feels like by the end of the game, you you tick each of them off in like a mission. It's mm-hmm. not like there's a build up of, oh, okay, well, we want to take out uh, the, uh, the Lost Panteros, whatever, and we're going to plan how to get rid of them. It's like in the space of a mission, oh, their, their boss is not the boss anymore and they are, they just, yeah, you're done with them. And then the next yeah. mission's like, oh, cool, now we got to, Get rid of the millennials. What are they called? The the Daft Punk band, uh, the gang. Oh, the idols. <laughs> the the idols. idols. We got to get rid of the idols, and then in the space of a mission, you off them. It's like, oh, it's just breakneck pace throughout. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, ob- objectively, I, I I think I mean I, I I'm not wrong in saying that the game is bad. Like, there's a lot wrong with it, but subjectively, like I'm a big fan of Saints Row, and I still got big enjoyments out of this game. Like. 
flaws and all, I acknowledge there's a lot of problems with this game. But then there are there are some little gems in the rough where if you're watching the video footage, I was telling you before we started recording about this, uh, there's basically like a LARP um, set of missions where <laughs> you and your crew are role-playing, like actually role-playing with all these other role-playing gangs um, and doing things to like take them out and become the king of this role-playing game. And that I thought was just so much fun. Like I enjoyed the heck mm. out of that because it's so silly, but the way it plays out, like I'll let me just scrub through the footage here to actual combat. Um, like the finishers themselves. So if you've played the Saints or any of the others, you know that the finishers are brutal. You you do some some dark shit, like stab people multiple times, shoot them in the head. But in <laughs> in these LARPing missions, the finishers are everyone's playing along. It's you like pretending to punch them, pretending to shoot them with the bow and arrow. And it's just funny. Like I thought it was hilarious. So mm. it's interesting because like, again, I acknowledge the game, not good. But there are moments like this that I thought were, like there are, I suppose there are moments of like, damn, this could have been so much better. Yeah, um, there's like mo moments of promise. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, like I stop and I think about it. This, this game is meant to come out in February this year. Yeah. What state was Wild. it in then? Yeah. That it was delayed. Like, because the state had released it now, not good. Like, exactly. core, core gameplay and mission structure and everything aside, like, the game is broken. There are lots mm. of bugs. Like, holy shit. This could have done with another six months to 12 months in the oven easily. Mm. Mm. Um, and, like, again, that might not affect some of the core problems, but it might have made the game review a lot better. Might have made a it feel a lot better. Yeah. Mm. Because it, it doesn't it doesn't run that well particularly well in any of the mm. modes. Um, I've heard, yeah I I mean just listening to other or reading other reviews and listening to other podcasts the range of bugs that I've seen like just obscene like to to the point where they're game breaking like you cannot control your character you cannot shoot mm. anymore like it, it's a huge problem. So I mean the fact that you you didn't encounter anything game breaking I guess is good but it. It is a bit annoying when you're paying, you know, full price for it. And these things know, will I, get ironed out. I, but, like, I there's had, a degree at which, you know. I, so if you say game breaking is in, like, I never lost my save file. Like, I never had mm. that. But I had many times I had to restart my game to fix whatever bug was happening. Oh, like, there were times when my controller just didn't do anything. Like, I, I could run around, but button prompts just weren't working. Couldn't climb into a car. Couldn't do this. Couldn't do that. That's the one restart. I've heard of, like, quite, yeah, quite frequently. Yeah. I had ones where it's like, oh, okay, my... And when I say re reboot, like, you could literally go into the main menu of the game, load back in. Um, I had one where I couldn't push the options button. It just refused to bring the menu up. <laughs> so, oh, I to, so I had to actually reboot the game. I had another bug where I, I think I climbed into... A helicopter and at that moment i wanted to open up my menu to check something and it opened mm -hmm. the menu then when i went back my helicopter was zoomed like the perspective was so zoomed in i couldn't see what i was doing until i climbed out uh, of the helicopter <laughs> it's just i did a, I, I did have a few in the beginning which i i wasn't sure if they were bugs or if it was part of the game but like in a lot of those early set pieces my weapon kept being switched back to a different weapon that i was not using oh that's so i'd weird. be using like the pistol and then every now and then it would be like oh you're back to the shotgun which has no ammo and i'm like what, what no what that's just i never had that but i mean i could list out so many different things i had which again what i was saying earlier is if this game was launched pegged for february and it was delayed like Good lord, mm. what state was it in back then that this is the state where they're like, okay, we're going to release it now. <laughs> it's, mm. it's ready. Or maybe it was a case of we've delayed it already, we can't do it again, let's just get it out of here. It's it's just, yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, it's probably that. It's like we can't delay this part past like the next fiscal year or something yes. like that, you know. So, But but it's sad because like there are moments where I think it makes me think of the older Saints Row games where those were great. Like... Mm. I get a Saints Row 4 maybe didn't vibe with as many people because it was, you know, too zany, too much mm. superhero focused. But Saints Row 3 and 4 were like peak. Oh, to I, lo me. I love 3. Yeah, yeah like three you, you knew that they were not Grand Theft Auto, that they existed to like almost parody Grand Theft Auto and just be a separate entity and they were great. Mm. Like they were crazy. The shooting was great. The, the missions were varied and fun. And then like you reboot it and you somehow miss carrying that because for starters like you're not going to get over the fact that the game is just buggy as hell mm. um, i mean and again like 
even if the game had no bugs, like the core core game itself still is problematic but still it feels like mm. it's just so much wasted just, potential I, I, is... mean, I mean I know you said you, you had you had fun with it but it's like it's also very difficult to to ignore that like the mission design and the world design just feel very old it's like that's exactly it. this game is like a 2022 game made like in a time capture from 10 years ago it feels like yeah because this yeah. I mean this might have been possible 10 years ago and like the act i mean i don't know when Sancho 3 and 4 came out but it was a long time ago yeah but it, it doesn't feel it doesn't actually feel... any evolved since then mm-hmm. to be honest like it, the open world it's, uh, it's design it's actually weird because it doesn't feel like it's evolved it feels like it's worse than Sancho 3 and 4 like it's taken a step back which mm. i can't fathom like how do you do that mm. yeah so and again, that's just that just sucks in a year where <laughs> Or even a gen where we've had just exceptional open worlds, you know yeah. what I mean? It's it's um, it's a thing of like when when The Witcher Three came out, um, mm-hmm. that was like oh, like this is what an open changed, world game yeah. can be. When Breath of the Wild came out, oh, this is what an open world game can be. It's like you're not 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 to say that you should emulate those two, but you're not learning lessons mm. from those two of like oh, like mm. what made these games so good that you know made people look look on them so fondly. Um, or, or even just looking at like, I mean, GTA Five came out in 2013. Oh yeah, and like, I'm not the biggest fan of Rockstar's open world design, but like, since then they had Red Dead Redemption Two and whatever. And mm. yes, Volition doesn't even have a sniff of the budget that those no. those two games have. But like, it you know it has zero design sensibilities from them. Like mm. it just it just seems like the most basic thing like go here shoot things drive back mm. go here shoot things drive. and the side missions are just like boring, yeah so, so one one thing i didn't touch on uh last week is oh, i mean i touched on it briefly was uh, business ventures mm. uh, so it, like i said earlier part of the story is you expanding your criminal empire which includes you launching businesses to you know embezzle money or do the criminal related things and like it's a nice touch it adds this other side to the game where you know, you, you have your side hustles which generate you passive income and what's tied to those side hustles are actual missions or activities. So, mm-hmm. for example, you can do, you can launch a laundromat um, which is obviously a front for like cleaning up crime scenes for people and your own gang. And there are, there are missions tied to that where you have to go, you know, to a crime scene and, oh, there's this car here but there's police around and you have to get rid of it. It's like, it's interesting mm-hmm. but... That whole arc, all those missions are identical. If all five or six of those missions are, okay, you drive to a crime scene, you get in a car, you have to dispose of it. Like there's no variation. And then mm. what they, they did, the one thing that always pisses me off in any game, not just Sancho, is they locked main progression behind side quests. So it's like... Oh, God. It's like, okay, you can only do I this did main not know story. They did that. No, so thankfully it only happens once where... You can only do the main mission if it's like you have to have launched six business ventures and finished two of their arcs, for example. I was like, okay. why? Like, it's just, it's progression for the sake, well, it's content for the sake of content. Mm. And it, it really frustrates me when devs do this. I mean, and people, a lot of people do it. Like, we were talking about Spider-Man a week or two ago where it's not as explicit, but nine out of ten times when you're done with the mission it's like oh i guess i should do um some side activities yeah, i guess i should patrol Kill- a little bit yeah and, and it's like, like yeah. you don't need to do that like yeah exactly have have the side content by all means but let players engage with it on their terms like, exactly like because if, I, if it's good enough they're going yeah, to engage if, with it yeah again to touch on the witcher 3 like i don't think i'm alone in saying i did a lot of that side content not all of it because there's a lot but i did a lot of the side content just because it is really good mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so yeah just that's just my my rant on that specifically. Don't do that, devs, please. <laughs> yeah, it's it's but, it's quite annoying, but, especially when 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 the content is just not fun. It's like, yeah. God, now I need to like it, I te- technically like grind this out just mm, so I can continue with the stuff I continue. want to do. So yeah. thankfully, Sancho only did it once. They could have done. Uh, they could have a hundred percent done it more. Of like, okay, now you need to do more business ventures. They did it once, so cool. Uh, but yeah, it, it's sad again, Sancho. Like I have such a soft spot for this franchise because it feels like it's the the little game that could try BGTA mm. and you know have its own unique spin and style. But then to put something like this out in 2022, like I don't know what what happens to 
this franchise and the studio because even Agents of Mayhem before this was not good. Mm, mm. So it's just I think yeah, this is I like the the lowest reviewed Saints Row in the yeah. series. I, I think this should be like lower a, lower than Agents of Mayhem, which yeah, wow, that is, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I, crazy. I'm not sure what Volition does because, like, after Agents of Mayhem, they were working on this for quite some time. Mm. Um, but then again, you know, Embracer seems to have so much fucking money. Maybe oh, they just yeah. don't give a shit. You know, May- maybe know. this. I mean, to be honest, maybe this is a ploy. Like, there's not much coming out in August. This is the only time Sensor was going to shine this year. Yeah, you know, in the state that it's in, the sort of quality bar that it has. Don't know, like. But I guess we'll see after the first week of sales whether it's even charted at all because that will mm. give you an idea. If if it doesn't hit like now, if it doesn't like, oh, you know, it was the best selling game in the final week of August, mm. then this thing is never going to hit the sort of like reach that it needs to. Yeah. You know? So uh, I'd be very curious to know because my advice to people is like, if you like Saints Row, like play this game, but maybe not at full price. Oh. Like wait for it to yeah, go on sale. But I'd be curious to know would this ever end up on a game pass you know like what is yeah. what is microsoft's policy on adding games like is it a i have to believe that there is a thing of you know is it an actual good game is it a decent mm. game like do mm. they put bad games on game pass like i can't tell you mm. i've objectively scrubbed through the entire library and got like oh i can't believe they added this <laughs> this is not a good yeah, game yeah exactly because like if this were to come to a game pass i mean it would give it a second wind maybe and if you're going to play it for quote unquote free yeah, by all means like give it a few hours see if you you vibe with it or not mm. um but you know it's yeah, current that, state, that, that it's... i agree with yeah like like see if it's actually like your sort of because mm. i don't think anyone's gonna walk away from this and be like this is a great game it's like mm. is this my sort of you know um like brain bubble gum mm. comfort food sort of game or is this just so bad that i can't even get to that point mm. like but yeah, I, I'm, I agree with you. I can't in good conscience tell anyone to go buy this game. Like no. even at whatever price it is now, I just do not think it's but yeah, worth But yeah, I mean, you know? yeah, even me saying the fact that me, big Centro fan, is like I loved it for, for the reasons of I just have a soft spot for the franchise, but I can't recommend this. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> Sorry I, to say. I'm, I'm 100% with you. I just I just can't. Yeah. Um, bummer. It is a bummer because... Like when when we when we got code for it, I was actually quite stoked because mm, I was like, I, like you know, I really yeah. enjoyed Saints Three. I haven't really been paying much attention to this one, so maybe it's going to be a big surprise. Mm. Um, but it was actually more surprising how much I quickly bounced off of it. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I yeah, I couldn't even because I know you and Darren and Jeff like you all acknowledge that it's bad, but it's like mm. a good comfort food game. I just can't even get to that point. I'm just like I'm actively not enjoying my time with this, mm. and I just you know with the little time we have in our days, all to to play games like yeah, there's so many good quality games. That's the thing. Like there's no there's no space for the sort of tier game anymore. Mm. I feel like, um, but yeah, at least it's short. Short look, I think if you were to do all the side content, it'd probably push it to 20, maybe 25 hours, which is still... So like uh, the first area in Elden Ring. Yeah. <laughs> which is still, still kind of short for an open world game, but I mean... It's very short it's, for an open world yeah, game. That, that's me guessing, um, though. I don't actually know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think I spent 15 hours in Spider-Man just completing the first act. Mm. So, Yeah. Yeah, it, it's Bummer. just sad. Yeah, Bummer is the right word because again, a lot of lot of potential there, but mm, phew, just mm. so many, so many misses. Just missed. Yeah, mm. just completely yeah. missed. Yeah. 